I think the, the biggest impact that's, that students have had is clarity of material in a timely fashion. We can take our number line and we can do this and we can bring it over negative one, negative two, negative three, etc. Positive one corresponds with a negative. negative one. The smart board is unbelievable with being able to have everything that's on my computer available to me and to the kids. I can use the same lesson over and over. I can keep developing and improving it. The kids interact with it. They're so into technology. I can embed websites with it. I can do Excel spreadsheets with it. They can come up and write on the board with some different interactive um, things that we do. It just helps, I think, the kids get more involved in what we're doing, and it's, I think, enables me to be a better teacher. Okay, so it looks like the cells are getting longer, and all of a sudden they're splitting into, so that cell wall is is splitting them into two separate bacteria cells. Well, the goal is just to get kids involved and active, and you know, it's always amazing that when you ask kids to write on the smart board or to drag something here and there, how your hands go up. I mean, it's you know 10 or 12, and it's sometimes even hard to figure out, all right, who can I get up there? Go on the discussion board. I've got it set up, and I've just got no attachments on this one, you guys. You're just gonna come in and answer the question straight up. You may have a classroom discussion going on, and you know, as a teacher, there's that wait time, waiting for five, six seconds to, to give kids a chance to process. Well, for some kids, five, six seconds isn't enough. Some of that processing occurs at seven o'clock that night, and the responses that I get when they go on the discussion board is nothing that I saw in class. It was, they needed more time to think about it. I post online assignments, and the kids write you know, essays and, and papers, and and are able to turn those in to me on the computer, paperless. Um, they submit them and then I can go through and grade those, make comments, and send them back to them all online. So almost like a kind of an internal email type thing with attachments, um, but that way the kids get to see their feedback quickly and with comments made. A lot of teachers are using podcasting, which is kind of an oral recording of a voice, either for lesson notes. In fifth grade here, we use it for fluency checks uh, for, for reading. Another thing that I know that some teachers are doing is actually allowing kids to read their pieces and they think that's just the greatest thing ever because then their voices are actually up on Blackboard and you know it makes them proud of their ability to read aloud. I've downloaded my West States and Capitals flashcards from StudyMate onto my iPod so I can practice them on the go. The most important things for me is that it's able to project my voice around the whole classroom. And so when students are spread out in the classroom, they're able to hear me without me raising my voice. I think it was the first week I was, I was using it and I was actually talking. And I went around to the back and it was a little boy that said, sometimes I never used to hear you. And I was like, wow, is that cool? Research tells us that students can miss up to 50% of what is being said by the teacher when they're seated in the back of the classroom. With more than 350 classrooms in Minnetonka equipped with microphones and speakers, we're ensuring that all students have a front row seat when it comes to hearing what is taught in class. Last year I didn't have this and this is my seventh year in the district and um, it it's just has made such a huge difference in the way that I can approach the kids in a more gentle manner. I don't feel tired at the end of the day, which is a very big difference for me from all the six years previous. It's just creating more of a positive feel in my classroom because of how quietly and gently I can speak. I learned about fish last year and I found a film about fish and we were able to watch it and the cool thing about the smart board is I can pick up a marker mid movie and the little freeze right where it is and then I could say hey check out the simple shapes that make up a fish. Before we start I'm gonna ask Sam to make a mistake so we can see what happens when he gets things right and when he gets things wrong. So Sam no pressure. <laughs> So then he can go back and when a teacher's not there, he can say, well, I know I played it wrong, but how did I play it wrong? He takes the mouse and he clicks right on the red note. and It'll show him what he did wrong. It said that he played a G flat or an F sharp. Now I go back and I click on the note that I'm supposed to play so I see how to play it correctly. We use two pieces of software in here. One is Finale, which is an industry standard notation program. And it allows us to do a lot of tailoring to what 
you know, specific thing we're composing. The software is a really equalizing agent because we all couldn't perform the music that we want to compose. As far as professionals, uh, we're right up there with them. You know, we have everything that you'd use in the industry. Um, if not the certain program, definitely someone can do the same. Um, we're, you know, basically way above other schools and right up there with the professionals. It really makes me feel a lot more comfortable. I'm going to Kansas State's architecture program and theirs is a pretty good architecture program and it makes me feel a lot more comfortable going into the program knowing what is expected of me from the professionals. Research has shown that if you simply supply technology, hardware, and software and don't provide any training for it and follow up activities that it doesn't get used. And so we've made a big effort here in Minnetonka to provide teachers with training and give staff the resources they need to learn how to use the programs and integrate it with their curriculum. This is my first year using the SmartBird and coming into the year I really didn't have any idea what I was doing and we sat down for a couple two hour sessions with Dave and Kim and I walked out of there feeling pretty proficient in terms of you know being able to write things on the board present things to the kids and throughout the year we've had time to meet with other teachers and I become pretty proficient at it and the support that the district has given me has been just amazing in the sense that they'll give me time to learn time to use and then time to share. You can see the grades right away and then you click on that particular class and can see all the assignments, all the participation and all the quizzes, um, just kind of on an ongoing basis. So when he comes home from school and I say, how did it go, I really know how it went. Recently, middle school parent Jenny Mariachi used the system to see that her son had a few uncharacteristic grades on assignments. I emailed the teacher, he responded, he actually called me within minutes. Um, so right there I was on top of, I saw you know, this low grade which was not normal for my son and, and we talked about it and why it happened and I mean actually I probably would never have known until report cards came out if it weren't for Skyward. I think technology allows teachers to be a lot more creative. Um, there's a lot of different uh, ways that they can reach kids with a lot of different learning styles. Um, there's just so many programs out there and so many tools at their fingertips uh, with digital cameras, with smart boards, with projectors, with multimedia things that we've never been able to use as extensively in the past. I hope you find the model of Minnetonka Public Schools encouraging and compelling. Uh, we think it is and there's more for all of us to do as this inevitably continues to evolve. We were blown away by the power of this technology as a tool for learning. I am so proud of the Minnetonka School District and the commitment that they're making as leaders in education.